I think like one of the biggest things that I would want out of kitchens is seed oils itself, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of people are surprised when I say that the first use of seed oils, like canola oil and all, they were used in the lubricant industry. Oh, they were not even used in the food industry. Wow. Humans have a very good ability to tolerate carbohydrates and sugar. Just that white sugar is a product of industrialization. Mm. These things called phytates and tannins. So these mm. again bind to iron. So a lot of people end up with iron deficiency yeah. anemia because they're eating so much spinach in the hope of getting iron. I wouldn't really uh, recommend eating too many vegetables to kind of feel healthy. It is propaganda actually. Vegan, there is a lot of again money spent on vegan propaganda, right? So mm. there's a lot of books and documentaries and articles that came about around that time short term impact of making that lifestyle change sometimes gets attributed to veganism because beyond 6 months beyond like one year the vegan diet will start showing its problems itself make you addicted damn this sounds scary let your food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food hippocrates the father of medicine said this back in 400 bc and in today's episode we're going to exactly talk about the concept of using food as the medicine how you can use the food that you consume on a day to day basis to reverse some of the chronic illness or prevent some of the threatening diseases which are costing you years of your life and to help us understand the concept of functional nutrition how we can use food as the medicine to reverse our diseases and get healthy lifestyle i have invited mugda pradhan mugda is the founder of i thrive a functional nutrition based company where they work with people to analyze the root cause and give simple solutions like lifestyle changes and change in the dietary habits to reverse chronic illness like thyroid diabetes and so on and so forth and this episode is nothing short of a master class on functional nutrition using food as your medicine like hippocrates said mogda welcome to the show thank you so much vijay i am excited to and i'm glad we could actually sit here and i think after 2 years 2 and a half is actually talk to each other yeah so i am excited about this and uh, i'm looking forward to really really great interaction and seeing what comes yeah. out like we've not even planned what we're going to talk about but let's see yeah when we met you know in shimla 2019 yeah. at that event um, i vaguely remember that you said that hey you know what i met this lady who talks about like there is something this whole world called functional nutrition where right. you can heal your body right with the alternative ways then you know the medicine conventional or this you know modern medicine um so you know i just in that's all the conversation that we had and after that like i was exposed to this whole world where then i heard that hey you know what your body has the mm. ability to heal itself right so i think let's begin there sure um, hmm. so this is something i can speak about endlessly right like how smart the body is when it comes to uh, allowing itself to heal so even disease the way it's looked at in conventional medicine right often disease is like what is this it's like some symptom happening to you either you're having a headache or maybe you're gaining weight or you have digestive issues right so that's a symptom and your body is trying to communicate with you that something's going wrong now uh, i'll explain what that communication is all about but the ability to heal right like suppose you understand the message well mm-hmm. you are able to interpret what is the message okay, your body wait, what do you mean the message well so the symptom itself right mm-hmm. that symptom is what i call the message right ki jaise abhi phone pe you get a notification that notification can be an email that notification can be a whatsapp message that notification can be a telegram message you have to open that app and like read the message and then make sense or it could even be a voice note or a video or something like that yeah. similarly when you have a symptom from your body like i said a headache or your stomach's hurting or your um, you know you have cramps in your legs or you're gaining weight or you're feeling fatigue and low on energy everything is a symptom and every symptom is your body trying to communicate with you that hey something's wrong inside mm. i'm using this message to kind of tell you that you know something's wrong please please take a look and fix it yeah but what happens is we often get very scared of the symptom itself right like mm. um, i remember my mom when smartphones were a new thing right and like every time a message would come she was so used to the standard uh, landlines ki phone baja to just pick it up and yeah. answer so she would be like oh there's a message there's a message there's a message and i'd be like that message is not going anywhere like relax i can mm-hmm. see it in my own time right so what happens with symptoms is we get very scared of the symptoms 
I have a headache. I have to quickly make it disappear. Mm. I have a stomach ache. Let me take something to make that stomach ache go away. I have some acidity. Let me take an antacid. Right. So often, what what most of us end up doing is, uh, in an attempt to quickly get over the symptom, mm. we fail to understand what the body is trying to communicate. Mm-hmm. And when we fail to understand what the body is trying to communicate, we actually fail to give it the healing support that it's looking for. Mm. Now, if you give it that support. maybe it's the right kind of food maybe it's a nutrient that's deficient maybe you're eating something that you're allergic to we don't know until mm. we find out mm. but if you give your body that support ki hey i read your message and here's my answer to it mm. the body will start healing itself right mm. so you don't need any external machines or you don't need any nuts and bolts fixing mm. things you don't need to really hack your body uh, which is what a lot of people are doing right like mm. performance hacking bio hacking mm-hmm. you don't need to do too much of that to heal mm. I can understand where people like Dave Asprey are coming from, where they are like you know optimizing the performance, yeah. like taking it beyond, beyond the, next the next level. That's level. that's a different mm. ball game altogether. But if you come from a place of disease or dysfunction, mm-hmm. all that you need to do is just listen to what your body is trying to say, mm. give it the answers it's asking, like give it the solutions, and it will use that and start healing itself. It's an incredibly It's a bio intelligent suit yeah. that you're operating, right? It yeah. really knows how to fix itself. Mm. And so, also, I have heard a lot of yeah. animals in that case, yeah. right? So when they, you know, fall ill, yeah, 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 then, you know, they have this intelligence <coughs> instinct, you know, like they are instinct. so yeah. in tune with yeah. nature, right? Yeah. Like I've always had puppies and dogs when mm. I was growing up, and I've seen that, like if that, and most of them were stray animals, like they mm. just come to my house when I'd be like at home. so i had seen that if they'd eaten something that was off or if they'd like eaten something that was not meant for them and you know they were feeling sick like you could make out they were lethargic and they were lying down i've often seen both dogs and cats do this they would go eat particular kind of grass and herbs mm. because in whitefield where i grew up it was mostly like a village yeah there was no concrete there was more like herbs and plants and grass all over the place right? so they'd go eat something and it would go and throw up mm. and you know all of those signs like the fatigue and the lethargy the dog is just sitting like that the minute the throw up was done that dog would like just mm-hmm. get up and start running around right so they knew or like um, even kids actually have that intelligence right like when a child when a baby is not really feeling well it might not really eat food he or she might like you know reject meals and all sometimes when you have an illness fasting is actually a good thing like mm-hmm. you're giving your body the opportunity to heal and detoxify and do whatever it has to But as adults, we kind of lose this mm. intelligence, right? But animals have it. Yeah, children have it. They just don't it. eat. Like what I've also heard yeah. is like when animal, you know, they yeah. fall sick or something like that. They just don't. They eat. refuse food. They refuse right? food. Yeah. They so refuse food. Allowing. They might just drink a lot of water, yeah. but they will not eat, mm. right? So it's the they know what their body wants. Mm. We get scared. So Mukta, you you know you run I Thrive, and yes. uh, a lot of what you do at I Thrive, or most of what you do at I Thrive, is based on. this concept called functional nutrition yeah. right so what is this all about all right so basically see functional medicine functional nutrition these are interchangeable terms to a degree it's just that functional medicine is often used by doctors doctors right like who kind of come into this way of treating their patients and since i'm not like officially a doctor i'm a nutritionist uh, i i use the word functional nutrition more but the approach is that uh, like i, I spoke of uh, symptoms coming as messages right like the yeah. body is just trying to tell you something and it's it's giving you different different symptoms so the approach is instead of focusing on the symptoms which is what conventional medicine does like you go with a headache they'll give you a paracetamol mm. right we don't do that instead of focusing on the symptom we try to ask the question what is really causing this symptom mm. right so the approach is about the fact that before your body actually starts showing disease or dysfunction stuff is already going wrong inside now what is that stuff going wrong how do you find out what are the answers all of that your body is ready to tell you if you know to look where right mm. you just have to look for it in the right place so functional medicine we use blood tests mm. and we use a lot of data like other advanced tests also like you know a, a stool test or things like that so we use a lot of tests to understand what is going on inside the body and we treat that so while we say we treat nearly 158 plus dis- different diseases right actually the label doesn't matter to us mm. someone can come to us with diabetes someone can come to us with high bp someone can come to us with thyroid issues someone can come to us just for weight loss mm. 
इरेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ वॉट लेबल दे आर कैरिंग राइट लाइक अच्छा मुझे ये है इर रेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ दैट वी आर ऑलवेज गोइंग टू लुक फॉर वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस पर्सन बॉडी एंड वंस वी लुक एट दैट डेटा वी वर्क ऑन ट्रीटिंग दैट ऑटोमेटिकली दी एक्सटर्नल सिम्टम स्टार्ट रिजॉल्विंग नाउ वेन आई से ट्रीट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल थिंक इट्स विद मेडिसिन एंड विथ लाइक पाउडर एंड यू नो दिस जडी बूटीज इट्स नॉट दैट इट्स प्राइमरीली फूड ओनली सो फूड इज यूज एज मेडिसिन 80% of of the work we do revolves around correcting people's eating patterns and and what they they really need to eat, right? Mm. Because maybe maybe somebody's protein deficient that's that's why why having having thyroid issues. Mm. Maybe someone doesn't have the right kind of fat going in, that's why they're having some other issues. Yeah. So we use food only as the primary healing modality. We do bring other things mm. like um, sunlight exposure. I'll talk about that as yeah. well. But food is what heals the body. you just have to know what food has to be given to this particular person mm. and that answer will come from blood work only and i love it because it eliminates any kind of guess work mm. because you know it's always very very objective so mm. i have now been doing this since so whatever is happening in your body reflects on your blood in your blood test mm. and there's a way of analyzing that data there are algorithms that you can it's like mm. actually mathematical sometimes mm. right and the fact that it's so objective and it's so repeatable and like the fact that you can do it across any demographic mm. is what really uh, to me gives it immense credibility mm. because see i have a masters degree in nutrition but when it came to my own health problems like when i was 97 kgs and i had an autoimmune condition and all that my knowledge of that nutrition wasn't helping me mm. it's not like i didn't study that time in college right i had but that was not helping right it's only when i discovered this world of functional medicine and i did my own blood test and i saw that oh i have like antibodies happening inside my body and i have mm. a like extreme gluten sensitivity and i have these deficiencies let me fix all of that mm. then my health started improving and the fact that i could apply this technique across like two th- like thousands and thousands of people and it still continues to hold true is what like makes me fall in love with the system right like mm. the f- data always tells a truth right? yeah. <laughs> like you can use this data so it's not the guesswork that's happening here there is you, no guesswork you're looking at the blood test you're yeah. looking at the reports what's wrong in your body and maybe let's say like you said right so if there is something some off some parameter off that you see on your report then that can manifest in maybe different kind of diseases yeah depending on what depending your genetics on, are yeah. prime for right mm. now your parents might be primed uh, like you could you could have diabetes running in the family you could have heart problems running yeah. in the family you could have an autoimmune thing mm. like both parents could have so races or something now genetics are unique to each person so is the environment and the lifestyle but the combination of the two is what ends up uh, expressing itself as disease in your body so even mm. twins could have different conditions mm. even if the <coughs> underlying yeah even if the gene pool is the, is the same mm. but the environment is different life experiences are different friends are different traumas are different so two people with the same genetics could still end up with different kind of dysfunctions mm. uh that is what we are able to catch mm. with the functional medicine approach right like mm. looking at blood tests now we've even gone into dna testing wow so that's really deep it's it's at another level altogether mm. so it's it's really exciting it it feels like you know this is a new frontier of mm. uh, healing, healing people, and yeah. uh, like you know treating people and the fact that the solution lies in your kitchen yeah. is what makes it even better yeah. yeah and also the fact that you know but why is it so that this is not you know discussed widely mainstream, you know talked about yeah. mainstream yeah why, why do you think so because i'm so glad that you know we're doing this and bringing yeah. this information to the people who are listening to this podcast uh, but you know this is not mainstream like the first thing that we know if anything goes off is go to the doctor and take those pills I, and uh, you know heal the symptom, symptom. treat the symptom yeah. i think that's also a function of how we've been raised and how we've been conditioned like even for me when i was sick in 2017 na i didn't think that the answers were in nutrition right like the first thing i also did was i went to doctors yeah ki i'm feeling like this this is happening can you please explain what's going on that i didn't get answers and all is like i have spoken about it in many places but i think it's how we are raised uh, even as little children when we get sick our parents first take us to a doctor right mm. so we don't even know like animals and little children innately know the answer is in like just listening to their body but it's the adults that forget this mm. and over time i think because of how we kind of get caught in that loop that something's gone wrong let me first visit a doctor and let me first go to a hospital we forget that we can look for answers in our kitchen but if you go to your grandmother mm. 
they will always have kitchen based solutions right like okay if you're having uh, let's say diarrhea here's a little nutmeg and that will yeah. help you yeah. if you're having sleepless nights here's a little poppy seeds and that will help you like so many my, i remember my grandmother having a full repository of like herbs always in her head mm-hmm. for anything that happened uh, to us to mm. me and my sister mm. so that knowledge is there i think it's our modern day way of uh, growing up and like the conditioning movies mainstream media that's really made us forget it mm. also uh, unfortunately medical curriculums don't really teach doctors um, how to treat chronic diseases mm. If you look at medical curriculums, right, they're mostly a, a encyclopedia of pharmaceuticals. Mm. That if this happens, this is the medicine. This happens, this is the medicine. This is the composition of this mm. medicine. This is the molecular formula. This is how you calculate how much to give by weight, mm. by height, and everything. If medicines fail, then here are the surgeries that mm. you do. If surgeries fail, here are the implants that you do. If that also fails, here are the machines you put people mm. on for life support. That's their training, right? Mm. doctors like i've looked at it us india they don't really get more than 2 to 4 hours of nutrition education mm. now most of the diseases that we are suffering with as a population as a species they are mostly lifestyle driven diseases and the ones we go to for treatment haven't been taught how to treat these mm. so this is something that's a failing of the system itself mm. that uh, it's so easy to heal these diseases with food but the ones you go to for solutions don't even know these things mm. thankfully in the us now functional medicine has caught up a lot of practitioners like even mds and all mm. of that are switching to this way of working with their patients hmm. and in india while we were the pioneers of bringing this now i'm seeing this actually a, a group of people like there are doctors who really are compassionate right like yeah. they became doctors because they wanted to treat yeah. people and help them heal and all of that um so i'm seeing a lot of doctors now adopting this particular practice hmm. in fact in the academy we run we have a lot, lot of doctors signing up to learn how to yeah. do this work oh that's really interesting yeah yeah so we yeah. have doctors who are signing up with us now that's because really they also realize that um, yeah you know it doesn't work what they've been taught doesn't work yeah for acute issues doctors are always life savers mm. i don't i don't dismiss doctors and i don't even dismiss allopathy mm. if you have a very severe infection and uh, it's it's actually going to become life threatening you need antibiotics yep. right or you get an injury um, there's like bleeding or you get a burn that needs like allopathy can save lives yeah. but it's for acute conditions mm. when it comes to chronic lifestyle driven conditions then you have to look at long term things like you have to look for the reasons that made you sick in the first place and yeah. then fix those yeah so mukta you said like the answer is in our food in yeah. in our kitchen so um so if you look if you were to look at let's say uh, you know the indian kitchen and if you were to say like okay you know here are the things that we've been doing wrong now maybe back in the days our grandmothers they you know things yeah. used to be certain way and then we have messed up yeah. maybe because we wanted things uh, you know in a different way much faster quicker uh, so what would be few things like we can start with uh, you know yeah i think oils yeah. yeah yeah i think like one of the biggest things that i would want out of kitchens is seed oils itself mm-hmm. right and a lot of people are surprised when i say that because when l- l- let's even talk about what are seed oils mm. so seed oils are seed or vegetable oils are oils that are coming in from uh, seeds like your groundnut sunflower uh, mustard sesame now a lot of these oils people say that they have been traditional use like sesame mm. seed oil is used popularly in the south mm. uh, groundnut is what is used in the west like maharashtra gujarat groundnut oil is used uh, up north uh, you'll see a lot of uh, mustard oil sarsom mustard patel oil, yeah, that yeah. is used right uh, but these oils really came into our consumption after industrialization came in because we did not have the technology to crush a seed and remove the oil out of it fill it in a bottle and then use it for mm. convenience right so it's really industrialization that bought it and if you look at the first use of seed oils like canola oil and all they were used in the lubricant industry oh they were not even used in the food industry wow even to date the grease and lubricant industry like uh, i thrive uh, ceo comes from the lubricant industry background right but uh, grease lubricant industry they still use seed oils these were not part of human consumption it's just that the industrialized way of making these oils made them very cheap mm. and obviously they are very very high margin high profit products right so it was very easy to kind of push them in the market mm. now the question then is what was used traditionally before these seed oils mm. came in the south mostly it was coconut and coconut oil that was used as the fat source um 
everywhere else it was ghee mm. right it was like you ha- most people had cows at their homes most people would kind of have milk and butter and curd being made at home and they would use ghee for cooking mm. um now the debate is on like the level of hormones and the injections that go into cows and mm. the quality of the ghee and all of that right so you, there are ways to fi- work yeah. that around right yeah. like i personally source butter from a local dairy mm. where i know what they feeding the cows mm. right like I just know the source. It's a very yeah. local guy. Mm. I'm not mm. looking at these big brands yeah. or these marquee brands where there's no control. And then I buy butter from him and I make ghee at home. It doesn't mm. take any time. Like any time, twi- yeah. twice a month, I make ghee and it's enough for me. Mm. So these are the fats that we really mm. need. So, but now uh, you mentioned like no seed oil. Huh. Then what happens with the seed so oil? So why are seed mm. oils bad, right? Mm. So seed oils are very high in a fatty acid called omega six. Mm. So uh, we've heard of omega 3s a lot of people are taking omega 3 supplements but there are omega 3 omega 6 and omega 9 three kinds of fatty acids so seed oils are very high in these omega 6 fatty acids what omega 6 do to us inherently um the signaling that they do inside our cells is they indicate that uh, it's winter is here Like mm. I, I'm not quoting uh, Game of Thrones, but they really indicate that because it's only in the absence of animal fats that humans might go and forage for nuts and seeds and look mm. for them. So too much omega three goes into your cells and starts creating something called as insulin resistance, which then leads to diabetes. Ah. Okay, so if you see how diabetes' ka incidence globally has been increasing, and you look at seed oil consumption, there's a huge correlation. Mm. second uh, seed oils also are quite inflammatory in nature so they start damaging your cellular structure so uh, when we eliminate seed oils from people's diets right like uh, there are blood markers to see inflammation you can look at crp esr and all of that but when we eliminate seed oils just doing that one thing can start bringing down inflammation in the body mm. so inflammation come down uh, comes down it prevents diabetes from happening uh, your cells also start functioning better when you remove seed oils when you inc- include more saturated fat mm. and um, like how it translates externally now this is internally right yeah. at a cellular level no mm. one's like taking a microscope yeah. and looking at cells how it translates externally is you will start losing weight you will start feeling more energetic mm. uh, your brain will start functioning better because it's getting the right kind of fat so that's why i say like if people think sugar is really bad mm. so white sugar yes it is bad but seed oils right the problem is if you consume seed oil today at a cellular level it can remain inside your body for 660 days wow that's 2 years wow yeah okay <laughs> so sugar will still get processed within a day and it will get metabolized and eliminated from your body you'll feel a little groggy some people get hyper with sugar some people have that dopamine like you know they crash after a sugary meal mm. but it's still a 24 hour journey unless you're consuming sugar every mm. day mm. but seed oils can remain in your body for that long wow. right so it takes that long to reverse seed oil damage and it's something that again mainstream doesn't often talk about mm. um you often so have so what are the al- alternatives then ghee ghee mm. uh, butter mm-hmm. coconut oil and if someone's open to cooking in what's called as tallow like um, actual animal fat itself acha there are cultures that cook in that also oh. right so i haven't heard of yeah, it yeah yeah so it's more ancient like tribal people do that right where they take the animal fat itself for people who are vegetarian vegans this might sound a little too mm. gross yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but they cook in that right mm. so those fats are very high in something called as stearic acid which is really good for your cells acha so ghee butter coconut oil mm. in that order mm. uh and if you're open to cooking in animal and also like what is the whole uh, you know how does it like whole if i just con- continuously use an coconut oil mm. or like rotate uh, between these three or uh, you know changing the oil or do you, you think you, like you, it's okay to just you can use coconut oil okay. um mm. and ghee occasionally like mm. if you're having let's say a nice dal khichdi and then you want mm. some ghee on it you can add ghee right mm. so you can do that but people who, who might be uh, mm. vegans mm. for ethical reasons religious reasons they don't want to have ghee then you can have coconut oil mm. and it's still okay mm. Mm. so you mentioned about sugar hmm sugar is like uh, so there are a lot of proponents of like just the anti sugar movement like don't have anything sweet at all and all mm. but if you understand how you the hear brain looks, bollywood celebrities saying that i haven't had yeah. that uh, 
काजू कतली बट शुगर इट सेल्फ नो सी आर ब्रेन रन ऑन ग्लूकोज राइट लाइक दैट्स अ प्राइमरी फ्यूएल सोर्स एंड इन फैक्ट दैट ग्लूकोज इज सो इम्पॉर्टेंट इन आर बॉडी दैट आर लिवर मेक्स ग्लूकोज इवन इफ यू आर ऑन अ कीटोजेनिक डायट वेर यू आर नॉट हैविंग एनी कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स एनी शुगर your liver will still make glucose because that glucose is what it uses for energy that w- what your brain uses for energy hmm. even in periods of high stress right like trauma or any kind of physical stress inside your body glucose making immediately increases hmm. so glucose is a very important molecule hmm. so carbohydrates and sweet and we wouldn't have so many uh, uh, you know receptors for the sweet taste if it was not something that we were genetically supposed to uh, process hmm. humans have a very good ability to tolerate carbohydrates and sugar just that white sugar is a product of industrialization mm. right so fruits for example that are naturally sweet there's really no problem in having fruits organic like raw organic honey right mm. so not not the pasteurized uh, big branded honey where you don't know how much honey and how much sugar mm. syrup <laughs> but if you really get honey from source yeah. right mm. that honey is really great because it's close to nature like if you look at these hadza tribes and all of these actual mm. hunter gatherer tribes there's still small pockets of them left in the world right their focus is often on hunting mm. like looking for animals to hunt and if they find honey they don't even go hunting they'll just go crazy with that beehive and they'll oh, wow. just be like it's like a party for them oh so because see they know that it's the quickest source of energy mm. without having to go on long hunts and all yeah. right udhar se in, in, immediately you're getting energy and it's delicious mm. so all the wild hunter gatherer tribes actually celebrate honey and honey is really good so it's not that sweet stuff is bad for you but if you are metabolically damaged which means mm. let's say you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes then too much honey or too many dates or too many fruits going in can cause problems then the goal should be to fix mm. that issue and bring in these foods mm. Mm. so let's talk about the packaged and processed food yeah. because we are so used to now having a lot yeah. of you know I packaged and processed food and that's that's mm. a big culprit again when mm. it comes to like what really makes people sick mm. like more and more sick right so packaged processed food and these uh, apps through which you can immediately order food mm. for yourself also right <laughs> yeah because there's no control see when when you eat from your own kitchen you know what's going making, in yeah. you're making your own food one is you know the ingredients and mm. secondly you're making it for yourself so there's mm. a degree of like joy and love that's mm. going into making that yeah. food it won't really harm you you also believe in the energy that goes in the food absolutely mm. big time believer mm-hmm. in that uh, that energetic aspect and you mm. can make out the difference yeah. between food that's been cooked with love and food that's been cooked just because it was mm. somebody's job to do mm. so but uh, processed food right like anything that's coming out of a packet it's usually um, even if you take like something like a tetra pack orange juice now look at an orange in nature mm. you'd pick it from a tree you'd just peel it and you'd eat it if you kept it out on the table for maybe even one and a half two days in that peeled form it's going to spoil mm. like in a day it's going to spoil it's going to attract flies it's not going to remain the way it is yeah versus a tetra pack orange juice mm. what happens for it to become a tetra pack orange juice is the orange is taken from a tree it goes like storage and then it goes through a machine that's going to crush it as it's crushing the peel is like sometimes going to go in it so there are different different tastes that are going to go enzymes are released things will start breaking down so now to preserve that thing preservatives get added to make it taste like original orange juice different things get added to make it look like orange juice different things get added right even if they're saying 100% natural there are a lot of things that are permitted by fsci mm that you can say this is 100% natural mm. without having to like declare all of those ingredients there is no way in real world that a glass of freshly ex- extracted orange juice would last on the shelf for 6 months mm. it wouldn't right so think of what must have happened to that orange juice now when your body when you eat food your body has the information to break down food in its natural form if you eat an egg if you eat a banana if you eat rice your body knows how to break it down how to digest it and how to absorb it when you consume foods that really aren't even food anymore right like they just made to look like food mm. things are added things are removed and it it's just something that looks and tastes like food but it's not really really food when that goes in like preservatives colors your body doesn't even have the genetic information to process it mm. so it's like if you were writing a line of code right you were you were like a software engineer m- making some software and you were typing code and then you just put in random pieces that the software couldn't even read 
you wouldn't get an app in the end hmm. so not getting that app is basically disease right like yeah. the, the app is health hmm. so processed foods have way too many things added in them to hmm. make them taste good to make them edit like there are um, engine like uh, th- these guys are called food engineers mm. a lot of these big uh, agriculture companies hire them mm. and they work on this aspect called sensory hy- hyper stimulation mm-hmm. so when our brain is stimulated with any kind of natural stimulus it releases different neurotransmitters like dopamine serotonin all of these but there are ways in which you can get your brain to get hyper stimulated mm. so it will release more of these and ah. that's why you know that thing that no one can just eat one mm. it's engineered to be ah. that right it's it's got the right proportion of salt is to fat is to the spice to the crunch so when you eat one you crave you, for you more. light up mm. right like a pinball machine you light up wow. inside your head and then you want more and then you wow. want more and then you're feeling sick by the time you finish that packet but you couldn't stop yourself because someone figured out how to go into your biochemical circuits your neuro circuits and then make you addicted to Damn. food this sounds scary <laughs> it is it is right <laughs> see there's a lot of profit to be made mm. out of uh, getting us away from real food and mm. getting us addicted to these wow. foods there's also a lot of profit to be made from the human sickness like poor human health itself mm. think of how many different industries profit from that mm, wow. so it's a pretty vicious cycle i mean i don't want to go too much into the uh, conspiracy theorist <laughs> mode that uh, gets activated <laughs> often but if you look at parent companies often the companies that own big brand pharmaceuticals are also the companies, companies that, that own the big agriculture yeah. products right mm. so i am not naming any of them mm. but you can trace it back pretty easily yeah right so the ones that are making you sick are keeping you sick mm. so that eventually you're just a profit unit for them wow wow <laughs> so you know one of the things that uh, you know you mentioned is about the whole uh, you know food and how processed and stuff like that and also this is the thing that you mentioned about anti nutrient when we're talking offline oh, yeah, right yeah, yeah. so first maybe you can you know share with our audience what anti nutrient is sure and then what are the most common anti nutrients which we think is healthy, healthy but we're just consuming it yeah so see anti nutrients uh, while i don't want to make them sound so evil and all of that hmm. be- basically these are compounds that are often present in plants mm-hmm. that prevent absorption of nutrients Achha. that's why they're anti nutrients okay now hmm. why why are they present in plants so uh, if you look at like um, evolution it's like animals right when you try to hunt an animal it has the ability to run away it has the ability to defend itself with its claws and teeth and hooves and all of that plants can't move away uh-huh. so what plants have done is they've created a lot of biochemical defense mechanisms mm. right so um, things like oxalates things like phytates things yeah. like uh, and i'll explain what these are mm. but they have biochemical biochem- compounds inside them which kind of work as inhibitory mechanism mm. right so an animal would not naturally eat something that is very rich in anti nutrients yeah. it will know when it one bite and it will know yeah humans have found ways of cooking that will make everything taste good and yeah. we do it right so these anti nutrients so for example there are things called as oxalates mm-hmm. oxalates are under the microscope if you look at them they are really these uh, sharp crystal line con- uh, structures that are mm. there in a lot of plants including spinach okay now these oxalates are usually there mostly in leaves and seeds hmm. so when an animal chomps on a leaf the plant releases these oxalates so it becomes inhibitory ah. what herbivores which is your cows and goats and all is they have evolved alongside these plants so if you look at how they eat a lot of these plants they, they eat with their mouth yeah, open they yeah. keep chewing a lot and there's mm. a lot of saliva, saliva that comes out that yeah. comes out and they have enzymes that can break down these anti nutrients mm. because they are herbivores yeah. they are designed to consume and then they have the ruminant stomach right like four pouches so as the food moves through their body it kind of becomes less and less toxic their mm. systems are entirely different mm. humans have not evolved to that degree with plants humans mm. have always been hunter gatherers more than mm. plant eaters right so we don't have all those defense mechanisms against these plant molecules so oxalates uh, if you're consuming a lot of like spinach and almond milk uh, or you know even like a lot of these green leafy vegetable smoothies mm-hmm. 
you could end up with oxalate over consumption and these could then become stones in the body because ah. these are crystals right so mm. what your body will do to bind oxalate it will use calcium mm. so you'll end up with calcium oxalate stones in the kidney aha and that can actually deplete calcium from your body mm. so it it i i was like this plant based vegan nutritionist for nearly 2 years right and then what happened was because i was also doing a lot of these smoothies and everything Uh, I started feeling like even post workout my recovery was not faster and everything and then I I started getting these aches in my back and my neck so I went and got a x-ray first and then I got a more detailed mri done and uh, my um, bones actually were uh, aging faster than my actual age wow so it it mm. looked like a older right so what the doctors like the bone mineral density has come down more mm. like a 50s person So hadn't I paid attention to the symptoms that I would have been like, oh, this ache and pain, I'll just do some stretches. Mm-hmm. I might not even have discovered. And then as I switched, and then I bought bone broth and more animal food and stopped having all these green things, mm. that healed, right? So the pain mm. is gone, and my bones have again found the nutrients that so they needed. So you think we need animal? We do. We do need animal, and I'll mm-hmm. talk about mm-hmm. that also. But mm-hmm. so oxalates is one. Mm-hmm. Then the other kind of anti nutrients are um, these things called phytates and tannins. So these mm-hmm. again bind to iron. So a lot of people end up with iron deficiency yeah. anemia because they eating so much spinach in the hope of getting iron, mm-hmm. but that spinach itself has phytates, and then a lot of your uh, even dal's and pulses, na, mm-hmm. they have uh, these things called protease inhibitors. Mm-hmm. So protease is an enzyme that's required to digest protein. Protein, yeah. and you're eating dals and pulses because you're a vegetarian and you want protein but the dals and pulses themselves have protease inhibitors mm. so they're preventing that enzyme like they're preventing mm. the protein from being digested, digested because the protease itself is getting inhibited mm. so plants are pretty smart mm. <laughs> they have figured out how to not get eaten mm. right but we don't understand that yeah. intelligence that's there in nature so plants have a lot of anti nutrients So if you had to ask me which ones to keep out of your yeah. diet right so i'd say like this is contradictory to every other nutritionist but green leafy vegetables are not required oh you don't need them i don't know where they i really don't know the origin of mm. why everyone started making them very popular mm. i really have no idea where it happened but i know they're pretty popular now mm. we the kids who come to us are the happiest because we tell them you don't need to eat your vegetables and mm. you can be very happy without vegetables they're like mm. wow and they go and mm. tell their moms like look mom this is what they're telling mm. me but anyway so you don't need green leafy vegetables okay there's a lot of almond milk consumption that's happening now and almond butter because people are going vegan mm. and they want to avoid dairy but almonds again are very high in oxalate so you want to mm. avoid that right and um, completely avoid them or like keep them low so mm. my approach is like unless it's absolute poison mm. don't be afraid of food okay even mm. gluten mm. right so gluten is something that uh, can trigger gut inflammation in most people mm. but that doesn't mean that if it's my birthday or if it's somebody's birthday in the team i'm not going to eat a tiny piece of cake i mm. i will mm. because i want to experience Hmm. Like I don't want to live in fear of food, yeah. right? Like I'm a human. I I I am the apex predator <laughs> on this planet. I can't be afraid of plants all the time. I just have a healthy respect for them. Yeah. Saying okay, I know what you're capable of, so I'm not going to overdo it. Yeah. But I'm going to find my ways of eating it better, right? So green leafy vegetables avoid. Um, people think brown rice is better than white rice, but actually white rice is better because a lot of the phytates, tannins, and even the arsenic is more in brown rice than in white rice. So white rice is actually better. <laughs> so a lot of controversial uh, mm. thoughts coming up here, but white rice is better than brown rice. And um, what else that I would think people should avoid? Um, the safer vegetables mm. are your gourds, pumpkins, uh, the dudhis, and all of these. seasonal stuff. seasonal gourds mm-hmm. that we have um i wouldn't really uh, recommend eating too many vegetables to kind of feel healthy mm. what works better for human health is more of animal pro- like we need protein we need good quality saturated fat okay so you build your plate around that right so eggs or fish or red meat if if you like red meat mm. and then uh, the fat is mostly ghee butter or coconut oil and then white rice and non gluten grains which could be jowar or bajri or all of these hmm. you mentioned about like you going for 2 years and i think i remember you know um your post that you have written on facebook about 2 years of 
completely you know not eating meat yeah to then saying that you know okay i realize that now yeah. it's important that i need to get into the meat right but also with the whole you know vegetarian movement or the vegan, vegan movement, movement yeah. you know that's that's going on so like what's your thing about like is it is it possible for somebody to get everything that they their body need no. from plant itself or do no, you no you can't you mm-hmm. really can't and i am somebody who did that professionally for 2 years i had a lot of professional collaborations that uh, went away when i said that this is just not working mm. how did i fall into the vegan trap one is i really um, i didn't want to cause harm to another being i really did yeah. right like for yeah. my own existence i thought if i could live without taking a life it would really be so cool yeah. one was that secondly um, it is propaganda actually vegan there is a lot of again money spent on vegan propaganda right so mm. there's a lot of books and documentaries and articles that came about around that time uh, it it felt like a you know a big huge wave mm. which was kind of pushing that veganism is healthier veganism mm. is healthier because of uh, the saturated fat in animal foods and all of that and um see when people came to be or even when i was making a change uh, when you take somebody off the standard diet that they are on which could be processed foods ordering in eating a lot of seed oils eating sugar and when you just even for 3 months if you put them on let's say a whole food plant based thing which is like whole plant based things without outside food without processed food they are going to feel better mm. so that uh short term impact of making that lifestyle change sometimes gets attributed to veganism but if you follow veganism for long like there are so many people like uh, who like you know stop being vegan after the first two years mm. so many so many like so many converts because beyond 6 months beyond like one year the vegan diet will start showing its uh, uh, like its problems itself right so deficiency start building up all of these anti nutrients start building mm. up you'll start losing muscle mass you'll start losing bone mass your immunity can actually come down because you don't even have the basic nutrients that you need to keep your immune systems up so unless you um, like the one thing i was doing for myself was because i was doing blood tests so often right i could see deficiencies were happening now i also had this cognitive dissonance that i was practicing something and i didn't want to change that i was mm-hmm. like okay theek hai if i'm not getting iron from food i'll just take a supplement from yeah. it if i'm not getting protein i'll just take a protein powder for it so slowly 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 my kitchen cabinet was more supplements and like less food food was like mm. okay i'm eating but then i had to also take so many supplements mm. along with it and i was like something is going wrong right if i'm mm. taking so many supplements and my blood work is still showing deficiencies and then same thing was happening with clients because when when somebody signs up with us for 3 months okay we are supporting them but afterwards also they keep getting their blood work done every 6 months or so mm. and i could see deficiencies were building up and then uh, yohan whom we both know of he also came into the picture so he also had been a vegan for a year mm. and because he's such a deep researcher he went into it because it wasn't working for his body either mm. and then he started sharing uh, information with me right like research papers and articles and i decided to let go of the identity that i was holding as a whole food plant based nutritionist like okay what if i'm wrong mm. right and then when i explored and i saw that okay maybe there is some merit to the fact that animal foods are part like and they've been part of our ancient cultures right mm. so i went back and included that first mm. i started with myself and mm. i felt good immediately bijay like immediately right so there was this little bit of um, guilt guilt or whatever sadness uh, mm. and also when you're vegan na you have a very high level of moral superiority yeah. you think you're better than everybody else on this planet because you're because you're anyone. like yeah. vegan mm. so i had to let go of that moral superiority and then i decided that um, if i'm going to eat meat i'm going to go to the butcher myself mm. and uh, like procure it like mm. i'm not going to shy away from the process i am going to deal with whatever feelings oh. come to me right so mm. i went and i bought so that was difficult mm. but uh, when i ate it i started feeling better so mm. post workout recovery was much faster my ability to lift more and more weight went up so i could see immediate changes in my body right mm. and so when you say meat what kind of meat do you eat like do you eat mutton, chicken or? mutton mostly mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, wherever whichever state it's still legal then i also eat beef when mm. i travel mm. but mutton mostly eggs mm. every day and uh, seafood like maybe mm. on weekends or maybe twice a week mm. but that's what i eat so mm. my diet is mostly eggs mutton rice and fruits okay mm. and how coffee. about nuts 
nuts again have the same the seed oil right so too many mm. omega 6 fatty acids so you could occasionally eat a nut or two but if you're eating nuts like every day as a snack ah. then your omega 6 ka ratio again is going up without realizing it right so mm. for a lot of people we cut out nuts na and they were like but these are healthy yeah and then we'll be like it's just the omega 6 thing about it and then when we remove them automatically the body starts so things like nuts and all occasionally you can eat them you don't mm. need to like like i said be afraid of yeah. any food mm. but, but not on your daily day, diet not on a daily basis oh. you don't need them on a daily basis mm. so fruits fruits are absolutely cool your fruits fruits meat animal, protein, animal protein animal protein if you eat butter mm. uh, rice is what i eat so either rice ki jo roti hoti hai like mm. bhakri right mm. that or just white rice is mm. what i eat mm. and uh, yeah yeah so you mentioned about uh, bhakri rice ki roti Haan. right so what's the problem with wheat gehu ki roti so wheat has something called as gluten mm. and gluten uh, is something so um, you know how your clothes brush is right so mm. if you take a clothes brush and gisofy something right it's going to start getting eroded gluten does that to our small intestine mm. so for most people uh, they don't even know that they are actually having a gluten issue until they actually eliminate it and then they don't eat it for a month or two and when they eat it they realize how it for me what gluten does is it makes me gain weight immediately mm. like my body tells me no don't eat this by weight going up for a lot of people it causes things like constipation gas and bloating some people it actually makes them very lethargic and tired mm. so gluten is something that's inflammatory to your gut it really erodes your gut lining mm. and reduces the absorptive surface so if the absorptive surface of your small intestine is reduced then other nutrients also don't get absorbed and sometimes long term exposure to gluten can create something called as leaky gut mm. which is where in your small yeah. intestine there'll be uh, things start leaking in yeah, your blood stream blood stream and mm. that can create autoimmune conditions mm. gluten also has this ability to mimic so when it comes to autoimmune conditions like uh, the thyroid right hashimotos and all of that the thyroid the thyroid tissue and the gluten molecule look pretty identical structurally oh. so your body might be actually trying to attack gluten but it ends up attacking the thyroid tissue so oh. we've seen that autoimmune conditions do so well once we eliminate gluten from mm. uh, people's diet so gluten is like that mm. but again like i was very afraid of gluten for 2 years because i had an autoimmune yeah. hashimoto then i reversed it and i was like gluten is my nemesis like kryptonite yeah. so i'll never touch gluten but um, 2020 was a difficult year for most of us right for me it was extra difficult because i also was like doing a court case for my daughter's custody mm. and all and it really emotionally it was really horrible mm. Mm. so at that time if i felt like eating um what did i eat i ate a cake or something right and i was like okay i didn't die <laughs> i'm alive so i don't need to be afraid of this anymore right so that fear of gluten kind of went away so now you can eat it occasionally but you have to know your individual tolerance mm. like if i eat it every day mm. my weight is going to go back like mm. i know right so, so but this is the country of roti, roti. In but the yeah, roti bhi it was not yeah. there before right okay. mm. so roti came mostly with british colonization okay wheat wasn't our main crop wheat came part of also the green revolution when uh, they had there was this major famine condition that happened right so canada us sent wheat as a cash crop that you plant this it will grow quickly uh. uh with the british it was mostly bread mm. and bread and pav were very elitist yeah so like if you look at maharashtrian households it was mostly bhakris right jowar bajra mm. and rice yeah down south it was always rice mm. up north it was mostly makka like wheat was never really there until uh, mm. british and the green revolution happened mm. it was not so what happens to us and our parents is we think just because we've seen it in our lifetime it's part of our traditional mm. diet yeah. but if you go back one more generation na, it's actually not part of our traditional diet mm. seed oils wheat sugar none of these yeah i think people who are listening to this are like oh my god this is <laughs> this is a lot of change coming my my way <laughs> <laughs> I know right and see the thing is like mainstream will be like eat brown bread is for white bread yeah high fiber add wheat bran to your rotis but uh, no mm. don't like this mm. is cutting edge uh, nutrition bijay mm. like see it wasn't even there in india until i 
for myself i discovered and i started bringing it in right mm. so in the us it's really gone beyond what we understand of mm. nutrition sometimes i feel actually that's why we also started the academy we wanted to really teach nutritionists right like yeah. you have really bright people graduating yeah. from college doing seven years of yeah. like a specialization and they've been taught the wrong stuff and yeah. people are going to them for the diet plans mm. and like not everyone is going to come to thrive yeah. right mm. but what about the people who are going to others yeah. why can't we teach them what is right nutrition mm. and uh, that, that's why the academy yeah. is there so now that we have you know covered a lot on the food yeah. aspect and i think more or less uh, you know i sort of took away from the food perspective these are the few things that i should be yeah. paying attention to right from the oil that i'm going to use to oh i've realized like oh now um i have my oatmeal in the morning with the seeds in it like i'm going to take off the is oatmeal still Oat, okay oats are okay oats are okay oats right are okay. Yeah, i'm you, not, I'm you not for going, I'm, I'm not thanks going. for that so i was like okay my <laughs> breakfast is gone <laughs> for a toss but then i realized okay i can just take off the seed from it and it's still good yeah, to yeah. go which is which is nice I'll, i'll stick to the basin kachira you don't need eggs is it um, yeah. um uh i have recently stuffed it now you are making Please, me like, riffing yeah, 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 so yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah and also the reason that uh, eggs and even the chicken for that matter is the amount of steroids and the yeah. you know, that's the that's so the so for me mm. also with chicken i still uh, never am sure right? with eggs what again because i've gone local mm. and i've actually gone and spoken yeah. to farmers in yeah. my area and all i've been able to source mm. so these are farmers who have one or two hens at home yeah. and then they lay eggs so then they come together at that village yeah. wala square and then they bring the eggs together to yeah. pune mm. chicken i'm n- still not sure right yeah. so at least with the eggs i know that these are absolute desi yeah. uh, grass fed grain fed yeah. open range and i was telling my parents about like the you know don't eat the chicken and stuff now i'm realizing the chicken that they have is like a locally produced ah, chicken like you know so like good. even uh, you know at one point of time we used to have like some chicken like raised in our own you know we know right? that you know what they are eating you know they are just so this feeding is the own traditional stuff, right? stuff that so, we yeah. lost right mm. most of us used to have cows most mm. of us used to have chickens running yeah. around yeah. and uh, like even my grandmom's village na there was a rivulet mm. like a river thing running so there would be like river fish also they'd catch mm. with no pollutants and all in that right mm. so they were very close to eating what was right for their body yeah Yeah so now that we have covered about the food aspect let's look at the lifestyle what are the other yeah. thing like okay if i'm eating right i'm sure that's not enough right so no. i might be eating right but what are the other factors that i should be paying attention to So let's let's start with like uh from the time you wake up okay mm. so one of the things that we even get everyone who comes to i thrive to do is get more sunlight exposure mm-hmm. and it's very easy it's free right you don't mm-hmm. need to do anything you just need to consciously make a note of that So within one hour of waking, ideally go get sunlight exposure as much as possible. So like you know minimal clothing and sunlight exposure, because what that sun. So people think sun is just about vitamin D, but sun is about so much more. Mm. One is it resets your circadian rhythm, yeah. which is your wake up and sleep cycle. Mm. It kind of uh, also gives you uh, so uh, even if like people are getting sick, na virals and all, mm. if you get sunlight exposure, sun actually boosts your immunity. Mm. So. vitamin d to it does only yeah. uh, your cells are like little photoreceptors mm. your your yeah. hand yeah. like skin <coughs> tissue itself and that also alters mm. like it really changes your mood mm. it does so many things also you get exposed to more of what is called as fra- far infrared light through mm. sunlight mm. because mm-hmm. now the ratio of uh, blue light to infrared light has gone completely yeah. right most of us are indoors and like we're doing a lot of work in the evenings with our tube mm. lights and yellow lights i mean white lights on so when you get more sun exposure ideally through the day you should keep going into the sun but mm. at least if you do it first thing in the morning you're giving your body a very good dose of mm. that uh, infrared yeah. uh, light itself and also it helps you set your biological clock biological that's like yeah. the basic thing yeah. it's a circadian clock right yeah. so first thing is sunlight yeah. so you and also just i want to do, yeah. you know add one thing to the whole sun, sunlight thing right i was listening to uh, Hubo man lab you know oh and God, he was talking about yeah amazing he, guy yeah amazing guy right so i was listening to him talk about the sunlight and one thing that he said sort of stuck with me and i was just paying it into right he said like animals instinctively in the morning know that they need to get sunlight yes. right and i have been observing my dog like i just open the door of balcony and she goes out and she stays there for like 15 yeah. to 20 minutes like on balcony she just sits there yeah. and like it's very interesting to see that I, you know animals instinctively I had know seen that this, hmm, uh, Uh, somebody had made like a uh, whatever that fast clip what time lapse mm, time lapse, time lapse. Thing. Mm. so this person had a lot of cats mm. and they kept a camera so mm. through the window mm. yeah. there were like two panels of sun that would 
that was moving through the day yeah. so these cats na like because they did time lapse otherwise yeah. you wouldn't even notice yeah, this yeah, behavior yeah. right because yeah. they did time lapse they could see that through the day these cats and cats are generally always just Not lazing around yeah, na they're yeah, like yeah. just sitting hmm. so through the day these cats were like literally following the sunlight ah. wherever it was going right wow. and most animals see animals anyway are without clothing they are yeah. usually in the sun like animals know Mm. Humans also are animals. We just try to civilize ourselves, yeah. and that's why we lost track of mm. our natural yeah. instincts. So sunlight is the first thing. Um, then we also look at water consumption, right? Because often a lot of illnesses are caused by not having enough water, mm. like dehydration. See, at a cellular level, even if you look at biochemistry, you know, at the electron transport chain, also you need water. Mm. So if you're not drinking enough water if your cells are dehydrated it's very hard for your body to function the way it's supposed to function so water consumption is something we track more or less we tell people have around 2 liters of water though we are running a study to see actually how much water do indians need mm. like ye 8 glasses of water aaya kahan se right yeah. or like do you need lesser in monsoon do you need more in summers do mm. you need more in delhi summers lesser mm. in pune summers because yeah. each city has its own weather so we're doing studies on that but water is the second thing that we uh, get people to kind of drink and now we've learned that it's not just water mm. but you need your electrolytes also with water so your salt and potassium uh if you can add that salt potassium and magnesium if you can add that to your water and drink it's actually more hydrating than just plain water mm. the third thing that we talk to people about and get them to start practicing is breath work mm. now i discovered the power of breath work in lps only mm. until then even i wasn't really practicing breath work breath work yeah. right but i think it was neeraj naik who was yeah. there at the lps that i had yeah. come to and i've heard him on the show as well yeah so you yeah. had him on the yeah, show yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. guy so he introduced me to the power of breath work and what i realized is most people are actually doing shallow breathing like chest yeah. breathing we are not even taking full breaths and again at a cellular level you need o2 for that final uh, etc chain to complete hmm. so breath work is something so we bring that practice in, even in our 3 month program right so if if you guys like, who are watching you can go watch the neeraj naik podcast and yeah. i'm sure he's given a lot of yeah, tips yeah, on yeah absolutely a lot of there, it, right yeah. then the fourth thing that we look at is um, supplementation mostly from the perspective of if your diet is missing certain nutrients mm-hmm. now let's say you are a vegan for whatever reasons right and you're not going to change or your uh, for religious reasons or in your family you were brought up as a vegetarian what are we going to do then about mm. the nutrients that are missing from your yeah. diet right where are you going to get your omega 3s from where are you going to get your b complex from yeah. right so then supplements play a important role in ensuring that you get all the nutrients your body needs mm. because even if you're eating the best kind of food but like vitamin d i take every day magnesium i take every day because no matter how good the quality of my food even i don't get as much time in sunlight as much as no. i think i need to get for mm. my body to make vitamin d so i get these nutrients through supplements then the other thing that is again so f- supplements you pay a pr- price like you have to buy supplement but br- breathing sunlight water is all free mm. then the other free thing is meditation mm. right and then meditation i can't tell you how important it is when it comes to the entire process of helping someone heal mm. because that allows you to access your mind and your emotions and heal that stuff also those layers i will will speak about that if we have the mm. time but those layers are very important yeah. as well and movement that's mm. the fifth thing so when i say movement people say like do i have to exercise to lose weight right so weight loss often is a uh, outcome of you fixing your internal yeah. biochemistry mm. but that doesn't diminish the importance of movement through the day mm. and um, my, my like my trainer in fact is very great like he's super in his approach to movement he says like let why can't it be play like look at kids you don't need to tell kids to exercise yeah. go exercise for an hour yeah. now right they mm. are just playful look at mm. animals they are playful they are moving all yeah. the time unless they are sick they are not really sitting mm. or unless it's opposite of their cycle right like mm. cats are active in the night they yeah. sleeping in the day mm. so humans also should be moving like that that's what we were designed for mm. we were supposed to walk long distances go and hunt, and hunt yeah. gather for mm. hours we were mm. designed for that so in our working day also let's get in more movement so while exercise is important what is more important like you can't do one hour of exercise and 23 hours be sedentary you'd rather do half an hour of exercise but move mm. every one and half two hours mm. do something else mm. so movement is important uh, it also keeps your body agile right like yeah. you, you just you feel, feel better energetic. you feel yeah, energetic you. when you're moving mm. so these are the things that we look at mm. and then um, 
like you apart from food i think these are the yeah. factors that one needs to take into consideration mm. for real health yeah so you mentioned about uh, you know mind and the yeah. uh, like taking care of your mind equally um, as much as you are taking care of your body also take care of your yeah. mind right so if i'm eating right and doing thing but if i'm messed up in my mind like you know the whole mind body connection bit it's mm. it's such a big piece i mean that's the work i do and mm. uh, it's not just mind and body it's also like mind and your emotions mm. and your soul yeah. itself right mm. because these are different things people think mind and emotions are the yeah. same thing but mind to me at least my understanding of it so far is so your body is like your hardware yeah. you have a brain you have a heart that's pumping in all of that but there's a operating system that's telling this hardware mm. what to do yeah right so that mind is your os right and that os can be at a conscious level mm. like you are aware of what you're doing then it can be at a subconscious level which mm. is you know memories and like uh, things that you already learned yeah. so you don't need to like i know how to speak mm. so i don't have to struggle to speak yeah. right but if i have to like play a guitar i'll struggle a lot because i don't know how to do that and third is the unconscious stuff like your actual unconscious repressed shadow material that uh, like so Carl Jung spoke of the shadow material for the mm. first time but that's really stuff that's trauma uh things that you don't want to look at about yourself yeah. your repressed emotions all of that right mm. so your mind also has these three layers mm. and then there's emotions mm. which are one thing on their own only right like feelings the energy yeah. so i i call emotions as energy in motion yeah it's really that right yeah. like it's it's energy that's moving through your body yeah. at any given point of time that's creating different different experiences for you now based on what is there in your mind your emotions can do different things if you have a lot of patterns for let's say fear and anxiety mm. driven by your past experiences then your emotional state is also going to be in those loops only mm. right so it's going to be very hard for you to experience gratitude and love and peace and joy because while you theoretically understand these emotions are important getting yourself to feel them is going to be difficult because yeah. your mind is stuck in yeah. different loops yeah and then there's your soul right which is like another conversation all together so i honestly think that all three are supposed to be in service of your soul hmm. your, your emotions your mind and your body they are supposed to be in service of your soul and your soul is like this divine fragment of the supreme consciousness that's like your unique thumb like yeah god decided okay i just want to see what i would be like if i was bijay hmm. and let me make a bijay who is going to be this amazing person who is hmm. going to bring about so many great uh, speakers and like bring stories out and is going to be the storyteller now if you had decided to like continue with the work mm. like pharmacy that you were doing right mm. i don't know how that was feeling like i we've mm. not spoken about yeah. that but i'm pretty sure it did not feel as good it as didn't. it feels of to you now right yeah. so your soul's design is to do this mm. work of storytelling and bringing narrators yeah and your body supports you in that you mm. have the energy yeah. your mind supports you in that your ability to create relationships and connections supports you in that so you are like literally living in service of your soul and that's why you are happy hmm. but a lot of people forget their soul's call hmm. and they live in service of society hmm. and society's conditions yeah hmm. emis hmm. and loans and yeah and, and also it's interesting that you say you know uh, finding that something that you really enjoy and i yeah. heard uh, um, uh, you know mike making i hope i'm saying his name even though he was guest of the podcast so where he has written a book called huga you know okay. like where the concept of happiness because he studied the you know people in the you know denmark and the uh you know uh, in those countries where like people are generally happy mm-hmm. why is it that you know They're like happy always the happiness index of these countries scandinavian uh countries it's like always you know like top countries and then he studied that and then one of the core strong thing that he mentioned on you know in in this podcast itself was like these people also like the thing about like what is it that they really enjoy doing yeah. finding their purpose was one of the core reasons of why they were really happy it's not that because these countries are really developed and they have all right. the facilities and everything but also they do what they really what, enjoy what they really like to do yeah. and also a lot of these scandinavian countries are centered mm. around community yeah that's so that community too, yeah. is a very mm. big piece right like mm. sense of belongingness yeah. and that sense of being able to do something for other humans yeah. is a pivotal at least for me i know that's a very 
so i have this ability to help people mm. heal like through my own journey and yeah. through my own knowledge right yeah. but just having that ability doesn't satisfy me as much as actually uh, making a difference making a with difference. that ability yeah. right so that's what that and the more i live in truth with that ability the more the world around me just rewards me yeah. for it yeah and then i'm happier right if i start going into identities that are away from this which mm. is what i did for the first few years yeah. of my like 38 years i try i lived a life that society said i should be living yeah uh, get married have a child do a job and do this and like i did that i wasn't happy right like to the degree that i went into clinical depression mm. versus what i do now and i don't need any extrinsic motivation to wake up and get out of bed right yeah. like i i wake up because i i'm just glad i have one more day to do this work yeah so i think that right like really mm. being in alignment with your soul is eventually what gives your body the energy yeah. to do everything it's supposed to but a lot of people don't have connections hmm. across these three hmm we see them as completely them. different yeah. parts or most of the case like we even completely overlook like we overlook the emotion it. thing that you know i i feel a lot of us just ignore it because we don't want to feel we don't want to face it we don't want to feel it yeah. most of us are hmm. uh, you know uh, like addict searching for happiness yeah. and joy yeah and avoid the avoid the pain. deeper darker yeah. pains mm. right but mm. if you can't feel pain how can you feel happiness mm. you have mm. to like only when you have the contrast of mm -hmm. either can you feel fully yeah. and then that's and it's very difficult for you to like come in. you know face the emotions that you have because you know one random morning like something from the childhood came up and i'm like oh my god you know like this this is something that so happened last week right so we've been given tools yeah, that's that's yeah, the problem right? so like last week something from childhood came up and then i realized oh my god there is sh so much shame you know that i felt at that p period and it never came to me but now all of a sudden it came up and then i realized so what did you do then that, you know so you know i needed that i i went to the meditation and then i have this particular practice where i go and sort of do this uh, talk to the child version of me ah. where i said that hey you know what i realized that what you needed at that point of time when you were feeling that shame as a child is a little bit of a compassion and understanding from the people so you around you reparented yourself yeah so reparented myself and yeah. obviously you know um, and uh so that is something that i try and do and then you know i'm not sure if that completely healed or not but that's all out of nowhere that came and i but felt like but you at least allowed yourself I, to feel the yeah, emotion right a yeah. lot of people they, people don't want to feel guilt people don't want to feel shame people don't want to feel anger anger only they will allow themselves to feel when they feel entitled to their anger like when yeah. they can actually express that anger yeah. on somebody yeah. who might not be able to revert mm. resort retort mm. back right but people don't want to feel all of these what they call as negative emotions mm. there are no negative emotions mm. there are emotions vibrating at different frequencies yeah. and every emotion is yours only mm. it's it's coming to you because it's called out your attention because something needs addressing like a symptom yeah like a headache happens because your body is trying to tell you something every emotion also is coming because your soul is trying to communicate something to you right mm. maybe you are ready to up level and go to the next level of who you are and you just need to heal these aspects of yourself and reparent one of your inner children that yeah. felt shame at yeah. some point of time yeah. or maybe there's an identity of you that doesn't serve you anymore yeah. and you just have to let go let of that go identity, of that identity right? because yeah. that identity might just be holding you down pulling you back but unless you feel what is happening to you you are never going to be really able yeah. to heal right so mm. people often try to suppress emotions with food i did that to myself also mm. that's why i became 97 kgs actually because i was stuck in that entire construct of what society wanted me to be i was very unhappy so i was using food as my escape yeah uh, people use substances smoking alcohol and all right so alcohol people used to numb it like numb emotions big time mm. and often it has the reverse effect like they become more expressive <laughs> during yeah. that that drinking spree mm. and then they don't even remember the things that they said but mm. so people use these substances which harm their body mm. which can create disease because they don't want to feel a certain part of themselves mm. right or the mind might get really messed up because of something that happened now instead of seeking help or instead of like finding the tools that will help you sort out your mind and organize it and compartmentalize it you might not know what to do yeah. with that chaos right like a cupboard that 
uh, has clothes falling out of yeah. it and you don't know how to fold clothes and yeah. keep them in their place yeah. so you'll just keep closing that cupboard yeah. door yeah. but that's, that's <laughs> very apt example yeah. yeah and then every time you open that door a little bit also everything will fall everything out will right fall then you'll out, just yeah. quickly take and put it back but yeah. so much energy is wasted in mm. that keeping things shut yeah and then that energy that gets wasted for your mind and your emotions mm. your body is paying the price for it yeah. right so sometimes disease like so many times i've seen cancer cases that come mm. to us they have so much repressed anger mm. so much right from childhood they've never been allowed to express their anger and it's all gotten and got gotten yeah. locked in their body mm. and if you give them Manifested the right tools, into something yeah like right mm. so you that's what healing is healing mm. is not so while functional medicine mm. is great because it keeps things very objective mm. and at a bodily level i can mm. really look at tests yeah. and find out what's going on and to one level really bring about yeah. healing in the body mm. true healing is when the mind and the emotions and everything starts integrating right wow so for a lot of people they hold themselves like with weight i've seen this even in my case often i would gain weight when i started feeling threatened mm. right too many bullies in life ah. or too many things where i didn't know how to protect wow. myself or set boundaries so my body would expand mm. that would become the armor wow right <laughs> yeah Crazy. so you you wow. and i've seen this with a lot of people who tend to gain weight is often they don't know how to set boundaries or they don't know how to like tell the people in their life to like stop messing with them mm. so one is you're eating food to kind of numb those emotions but also see there are a lot of people who eat a lot of food but they're still thin mm. not everyone who eats a lot of food automatically yeah. gains weight right the people who really feel threatened and insecure and afraid but don't know how to respond to that are the ones who kind whose bodies kind of start armoring up mm. i've seen that with weight i've seen people who have identity issues right like an existential crisis itself the gut starts mm. going for a toss because your identity is centered in this hmm. chakra and this space right like uh, even as a fetus when you form first yeah. your spine forms and then your gut also forms hmm. simultaneously so hmm. brain spine gut hmm. these are the things that form so your identity is often centered here now if you end up with like existential crisis or identity crisis or you're living a life that you don't want to it's live it's not in sync with who you, you truly end up are with gut yeah. issues right hmm. so so it's so vast it's yeah. so vast That's every a, human is a jigsaw puzzle yeah so i think there's a lot that we can go and yeah. you know clearly we can go on and on go but on and i on. think I in know. the uh, you know um, so maybe we'll stop here and next time you are in delhi we are doing definitely another episode because <laughs> i see there's a lot that you have loose ends that yeah. you have left uh, yeah. which we are going to cover in the next episode of this podcast but if people are you know going through something and if they need you know um, you or your team to sort of Fine help now. them So uh, how where can they find So the website is mm. ithrivin.com mm. uh, people can go there and book a consult either mm. with me or someone from the team if mm. they want to look up the kind of work we've done mm. and testimonials and all that we do have a pretty decent instagram mm. Uh, mm. handle yeah. so the instagram handle also is ithrive_in mm. mm. uh, and that's where the other handle so the academy supplements mm. everything is there yeah. but the website is ithrivin.com yeah. and i think that's, that's the best place to that's go that's a place and yeah. i'll put that in the description and uh, you know before i let you go i'd like to mention that uh you know while you know we have met at that event and after that i know that you've been doing good stuff i kept seeing your updates and then you know a friend of mine came to me and said that hey you know what um, i'm dealing with this uh thyroid issue and uh, you know do you know anyone who can help me and then i said i think uh, you know i think i know someone maybe <laughs> why don't you talk to mukda and thank you so much for and, that and uh, you know why don't you talk to mukda yeah. and uh, you know just uh, have a conversation with her and see where it goes and then the next thing that i hear is like hey you know what i love what they are doing so much yeah. so i'm going to give this a shot so i'm going to sign up for the three months uh, yeah. sort of a, you know reset plan that mukda uh, you know and her team designed and uh, you know and f- few weeks back she came to me saying that hey you know bj i'm so grateful that you've introduced me to mukda she because did. i've started you know seeing a lot of changes in yeah, my yeah. body she and she did really know. well mm. and her body responded yeah. beautifully actually i did a live mm. with her also because yeah. like i do this oh, nice. once once mm. a month i call it the wellness warrior yeah. show so people who really like embrace the yeah. warrior within themselves to kind yeah. of take care of their health they yeah and the also show. she mentioned that uh, she got her parents on yeah, the yeah, yeah. you She's know because she loved it so much so which is which is amazing you know i think that's a great testimonial to um, so you know have so that's how the business also yeah. has grown it's, yeah. it's really grown through referrals yeah. and that's why i i have such a huge focus on community mm. because mm. You know, one person heals; mm. it starts creating a ripple of health yeah, around absolutely. them. Yeah, right? absolutely. So they want their family, they want yeah. their friends to kind yeah. of heal. So. Absolutely. 
So it's thank it's, you so much for everything that you're doing, and I uh, really you appreciate you taking over. this time it's, here. It's, this is a really great conversation. I'm sure there's. I mean, for me personally, there's a lot to take from this <laughs> conversation, and I love this. Uh, you know, um, the conversation. Thank you so much uh, for being here and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you for inviting me, Vijay. I I'm I'm honored that I'm here with you talking about this. For me, it it just feels like I just want to talk more about. You know, it's not that difficult to get yeah. your health back yeah. and to reclaim your life. And even the three-month program, we call it alive. Right? Mm. Like we just want you to feel alive. Like, mm. what does it mean to be a alive human being? Yeah. So, thank you so much for inviting me over and Absolute bringing pleasure. my voice out. So. Awesome.